So we're now going to consider how to draw and interpret motion graphs. So in particular, we're going to be looking at displacement versus time graphs and also velocity versus time graphs. So these can be very useful when we're trying to understand the motion of an object as they give us another representation to consider. So for now, we're going to keep it nice and simple and we'll just consider motion in one dimension. So initially we're going to consider motion in the x direction. So to start with, let's take a really simple case. Consider the dot up here, which is moving in the di x direction with a constant speed. Now if we want to draw a displacement versus time graph for this dot, we put the displacement on the y-axis. So even though it's moving in the x direction, we can show its displacement on the y-axis. Sorry if that's a bit confusing. And we put the time along the x-axis. So with this dot, the displacement is increasing at the, a constant rate. So it is actually represented by a straight line on our displacement time graph. So the displacement time graph for this dot looks like this. Now we can actually work out the gradient of our displacement versus time graph. Gradients for graphs are given by the rise divided by the run. In this case we've put the displacement on the y-axis, so that is the rise, and we've put the time on the x-axis, so that is the run. So our gradient is equal to the displacement over the time, but we know what displacement over time is. We know that it's the velocity or the speed if it's just going in one dimension. And so if we have a displacement versus time graph, it turns out that the gradient is equal to the speed of the object. So just by looking at a displacement time graph, we can tell a lot about the speed of the object. Now the other useful graph to draw is a velocity versus time graph. So for this same dot, it's traveling with a constant speed. So the speed or the velocity is always going to be the same. So our velocity time graph, where we've put, got velocity now along the y-axis and time still along the x-axis, is just a horizontal line, as it's always equal to the same value. Now, a velocity versus time graph is a doubly useful graph. We can actually get some information about the displacement of the object and also the acceleration of the object from our velocity versus time graph. So to understand the displacement, the displacement is related to the velocity through the velocity is equal to the derivative of the displacement with time, or ds dt. The opposite of differentiating something is integrating something. So as we'll see, we can get the displacement of an object by integrating the velocity. But what's important for now is that when we integrate something, we are effectively finding the area under the curve. So what this tells us is that the displacement is just the area under the curve of a velocity time graph. So for a, our ball traveling with a constant velocity, you can see how its displacement is increasing. And this is just given by the area under that curve, which in this case is a rectangle, so the area is also increasing at a constant rate. Now the other thing we can read off our velocity time graph is the acceleration. So the gradient of our velocity time graph is once again just the rise over the run, which in this case is the velocity over the time. So velocity divided by time gives us the acceleration. So for our object traveling with a constant velocity, the acceleration is zero. And so we can see that on our graph as it's got a horizontal line. So the gradient is zero as it's not increasing. It's just zero. Now that was a pretty boring case, but hopefully it was clear to you what we can, how we can interpret displacement versus time and velocity versus time graphs. Let's now consider a dot which is accelerating at a constant rate. So here's our dot now. It's traveling with a constant acceleration along the x-axis. Now if we want to plot a displacement versus time graph for this, at later times the displacement is changing more rapidly. So we're going to have a steeper gradient at later times and a shallower gradient at earlier times. So the graph looks like this. 
it turns out that this, the graph in this case is actually a parabola. So we'll be able to derive that later. But for now, I just want you to get a feel of how the graph actually looks. Now the velocity versus time graph in this case is actually a straight line as our velocity is increasing at a constant rate. So the acceleration, which is the gradient of the velocity versus time graph, is actually a constant. Now this is actually a very useful case physically as while we don't generally get around us in everyday life accelerate, constant acceleration in the x direction, we do often get constant acceleration in the y direction. So the acceleration due to gravity is, causes constant acceleration in the y direction. So for example if I drop this ball, it's undergoing constant acceleration in the y direction. So you'll be seeing this an awful lot and when we get to projectile motion it will be very important. Okay, so continuing with graphs, let's consider a slightly more complex example now where a ball moves like this. So it is moving slowly with a constant velocity then it's stopping for a little bit and then it's moving with a constant velocity again, but much faster now. Now in order to plot a displacement versus time graph for this, it's going to look like this, where we've got a constant shallow velocity. When the ball stops, we have a horizontal line, and then when it moves off with a faster speed, we've got a steep but constant line again. The velocity versus time graph in this case is initially it is constant but a small value so we've got a horizontal line. It then stops so it's got zero velocity and we have a line along the x-axis and then it takes off with a constant velocity again but faster now and so we've got a horizontal line parallel to the x-axis and higher up than before to show that it is going faster.